Hi, I'm Bob Pavlacker. We're here with Food for the Soul. Paul talked about how we can feed baby Christians with milk, but as we grow, we need the meat of the Word. And so we're having a meal. We're breaking the Word down today. Uh, actually, if you're just seeing me or this show for the first time, we're in a series right now. This is the sixth part of a six-part series. We're talking about drawing the illustration or the types and shadows from the Old Testament of the tabernacle, the temple of God. How in the New Testament, that temple's gone. It says, we, the church, you and I have become the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple. And so if you see all the stuff that Moses wrote concerning the temple in the Old Testament, every bit of it, every word of it is a type and shadow. How we have become not only the temple, but the high priest. And also, if you want to know the truth, everything about the temple is about Jesus. So everything we're talking about is about Jesus. It's about Jesus in us. It's no longer I that live, but Christ Jesus who lives inside me. I, uh, I hopefully am showing you Christ inside of me. And so I think there's so many wonderful lessons that we've looked at about how we come into the presence of God. Again, I have to mention the fact that the Word of God says that Jesus never leaves us or forsakes us that God is always with you. I don't care what kind of sin you're into. You were born again as a child and you're not walking with God. You know he's still there. Uh, he'll never leave or forsake you unless you've kicked him out and said you want no part of it. He's there with you. But there is a place that you can dwell in him. For those who are walking the path of righteousness for his namesake, there's a progression in your life. God desires intimacy above all things with you an honest and open heart, a relationship that's more intimate than husband and wife. He's called our lover in the Song of Solomon. He really wants us to be intimate, and there's a, there's a place that we dwell in him. I believe the temple calls it the Holy of Holies, that the fire is present all the time, and that the high priest was only allowed to go into once a year. But we're told in Hebrews we can come boldly into the throne room of grace, 24-7. Be in the presence of God and then bring that back to the people that need it so badly. You are that high priest. So hopefully you've been watching with us. Now, Global TV Network at www.globaltvnetwork.us. We've done each of the shows there and they're producing. God bless them and there's wonderful shows there. We're also available on the uh, church website. That's at Facebook, newlifefamily.nc. And on YouTube, you can just find us on Food for the Soul. This is the sixth part of this series. We're going to take a look at the altar of incense. Now, just briefly, the furniture we've looked at is the door. Jesus, of course, is the door. No man comes to the Father but through him. Then we looked at the burnt altar. Jesus, of course, is the lamb that was slain for the, from the foundation of the world, slain for your sins. Coming to God, there had to be a blood atonement sacrifice. You can go back and see that. Uh, then we talked about the laver, washing of water by the word, a mirror that the priest would look into and it would reflect him. Then there was a cleansing process, the difference between salvation and sanctification, that we of Christians, we can't do anything but receive salvation but you are required to act in sanctification. You look into the word of liberty. You cleanse yourself with the renewing of the mind. As we progress, all of that's in the outer court where it smells and smells like death. Now we come into the actual tent itself, into the holy place. And in the holy place, we saw it's filled with gold and this beautiful incense. And then we start looking at the deeper thing. When I say deeper, I don't know. These are the things that are more sensitive 
that man struggles with. You have to be more in tune to God. These are areas of the candlestick. We talked about the filling with oil. The Bible says, be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto God. This is how we stay filled with the Spirit. The high priest would do it twice a day, pour oil, fill with oil, trim the wicks, keep our light burning bright. We have a responsibility to do that. But oh, brethren, the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, we are the sons of God. I'm desiring to hear his voice, the still small voice, and him to lead me in every aspect of my life. The candlestick. Then we came to the table of showbread and we said this is probably where the church is most struggling. We're having a hard time even loving each other within the church. So much division and strife. And then different churches and denominations. And then the world. And then the left and the right. And Trump and Obama. And there's so much division of people that are calling themselves blood-bought church of God. A peculiar people. A royal priesthood. One. Don't you know there's one Lord and one faith and one God and Father who is above all and in us all and through us all. The table of showbread teaches us how we're supposed to esteem each other higher than ourselves. That we recognize our shortcomings and if God forgave us our shortcomings, we then not only forgive others, we strive to see the gifts and callings of God in them because we are incomplete without their gift. I have something for the body. I believe I'm anointed to teach. You may not think so after you watch, but I do. And there's, you are also anointed. Every one of us have an anointing that we're supposed to. It's not for us, it's for others. As we join together, the body becomes a living tabernacle to God. That sharing of the bread, the breaking of the showbread. On top of that, there was an altar of incense. You sacrifice. I sacrifice my relationships because I put you first. I have to forgive and love you. My wife, I have to esteem so highly and live my life to bring her into the fullness of who she is. Every one of these is a, has a little altar of frankincense. Every relationship in your life is an offering to God. As you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. And so we leave the table of showbread and we come now to the altar of incense. I need to take it just a second. We'll look on the screen and go back and think about the burnt altar. The burnt altar was like 15 feet by 15 feet. It was huge. You would walk up a ramp and you would kill whole cows, tie them to the four posts, slit their throat, pour the blood out and burn them. This altar of incense is going to have the same dimensions. If I could, let me go back to Exodus chapter 30. Uh, I, I'm going to read 1 through 5, if you would. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shittim wood. Shittim wood was per, the, the, is the cleanest perfect wood we know. It's, a, a, I think, an example of Jesus' physical life. God prepared a tabernacle for him, sinless, uh, thou shalt make it. A, a cubic shall be the length thereof, and a cubic the breadth thereof. That's about a foot and a half. Four squares shall it be, and two cubics shall be the height thereof. It'll have four horns on it, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. The top thereof, and the sides thereof, round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown, a lip of gold round about, and two golden rings. Shall, remember this, I'll get back to this point. Two golden rings shalt thou make unto the crown of it, and by those two corners thereof and upon the two sides of it shall thou make it and they shall be for places for the staffs to bear it withal and thou shall make the staffs of chittim wood and overlaid with gold amen one of the things I, I want you to see in what we read uh, you'll see two different pictures of the uh, altar of incense if you were to look online there's hundreds of pictures of the altar of incense and they all have four hooks and two poles to carry it, you would carry it like you did the burnt altar, square. But actually, if you just read that, you only put two hooks in, which means it would have been turned like a diamond, carried that way. So you can see the picture there that's accurate, where you'd have two holes there. I, I, I just went, if I had time to teach in death, all of this means something. But what I want you to see, if you can envision, from four weeks ago, we were talking about the burnt altar being so big that you would have a cow on there, 15 feet by 15 feet. This altar of incense, that one was made out of brass, brazen altar. It was judgment, the picture of Christ with brazen feet. This one is gold. 
but the dimensions are the same. That one's big, this one's small. They both have the four horns, they have the exact same dimensions. One is where you sacrifice the animal, the other is the pure life. One is inside the holy place where the glory, the incense is filling the air. The other is outside in death. But it's a beautiful picture of Christ. We started at the beginning of the show saying how there's four faces to the living ones that give testimony to God. We see them repeatedly as a lion, a man, an ox, an eagle. All of these are important attributes the way we see Jesus. He is the king of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But you also have to see him as the son of Adam, the perfect man who Adam was supposed to be. He also is our sacrifice, isn't he? He's the ox. And he's the son of God, the eagle from heaven. And so all of these things uh, show this and the whole tabernacle teaches us about Jesus. But on this particular one, the altar, you have the two altars and the differences between them, I think, speak volumes. Um, just technical sides. It has a lip around it, a hand breadth lip. Do you know they were never allowed to let this fire go out? When they carried the altar of incense through the desert for 40 years, you were carrying live coals. <laughs> the reason it had the lip around it was to keep the coals from falling. The fire never goes out. We're talking about God inside us, right? <laughs> you don't take a break from God. And so it would always be lit. But pe most people, when they're talking about this altar of incense, they f usually um, refer to prayer. If we've talked about the other pieces as the door, the sacrifice, the burnt altar, the labor, the washing of water, the renewing of your mind, the Holy Spirit and the oil, the fellowship one with another, how we treat each other, getting to this point, then they say this is our prayer life. And in a sense, I agree, but you know, when people think your prayer life, oh, for our Father that art in heaven, and that's really not what it is. You should be praying to God without cease according to first thessalonians chapter 5 i think verse 17 praying without ceasing um what that is is lifestyle what god is really after let me read a couple of verses before we go i'm going to go to uh, psalms 144 verse 1 it i cry unto thee make haste unto me give ear unto my voice when i cry unto thee let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of, of my hands as the evening sacrifice. King David is actually saying, let my prayer be incense. I'll lift it up to you the twice a day, just like the incense in the temple. So it's fair to say, yes, this is prayer. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 says, And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures, those were the ones with the four faces, uh, and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one of them had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense. Which are the prayers of the saints? Well, that seems pretty obvious. The altar of incense, here you have in the throne room, angels holding incense, which are the prayers of the saints. I think it's a pretty safe bet to say, yes, this is prayer. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3, and then an, another angel who had a golden censer, like we saw earlier, and the 24, uh, I'm sorry, uh, another angel who had the golden censer came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense to offer, along with all the prayers of the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Couldn't have a clearer picture. This incense is a type of the prayers of the saints. But I'm here to draw the distinction. There's many types of prayer. Folks, if you can help keep me on the air, um, there's so much teaching into prayer. There's so many different types of prayer. And there's a prayer that really isn't very intimate. And then there's a prayer that is very intimate. What we're talking about here on the altar of incense, if you can envision yourself as the high priest, you have to bring the blood, you have to come through the door, you have to wash yourself in the water, renew your mind with the washing of water, use the water itself to start cleaning your brainwashing, cleaning your mind. To be sensitive to the Holy Spirit 24-7, he's the one leading you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, we are the sons of God. To watch our relationships keep hate, jealousy, envy, strife, division out of our life. To be speaking positive about everything and everybody we can because we've forgiven them because God forgave us. All of that is the last thing the priest is going to do. He's going to go and take, and again, lack of time, 
he took four, the, each, the incense was made up in four ingredients. We're not even sure what some of them are. You would take these ingredients, it was against the law to ever mix this for yourself or anywhere else. Remember the strange fire that was often? They were changing the incense and taking it out of the temple. It was only allowed to be used in the temple, very costly, but they would take a handful of this incense and throw it on the fire, the coals that never went out. And those coals would ignite that incense and it would envelop the priest in this glorious aroma. That's a type of us. I don't think it's just prayer. I think it's prayer. It's a prayer for lifestyle. But it's all of these ingredients. Once you have your life in order, once you're doing these things, we'll never do it without sin. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If you sin, he's faithful and just, not only to forgive you, but to cleanse you. But you should be growing. Growing how? Closer to the Lord. A scary verse. Uh, Mark, in... In Mark chapter 7 and verse 21, it says this, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which, in, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Stop for a minute. Did God know, did Jesus know them? Jesus knows everything. He knows every one of us, whether we're believers or not. Especially those who are calling upon his name. They said, didn't we cast out devils in thy name? He said, I didn't know you. Is that possible? Judas did it. Remember, I know that because it says that he sent out the twelve. And when he sent out the 12, they came back and they marveled. And they said to Jesus, it says they all came back and said, even the devils are subject to us at your name. And Jesus said, rejoice not in this, but that your names are in the Lamb's book of life. Judas was casting devils out, but we know that Judas was lost. None was lost save one, the son of perdition. Can you go to church and call upon the name of Jesus and not know him? Yes, I think it's entirely possible. This doesn't say it's going to be rare. If you'll look in verse 21, it says many. In fact, I think it's, no, it says many. Many will say to me in that day. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, didn't we go to church? Didn't we pray in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? And he's not going to say, no, you didn't do those things. He's going to say to them, yeah, but you didn't know me. That word no is what we want to look at. This is really what this temple is about. We want to get into the holy of holy places. Jesus calls it his bed chamber, his secret chambers. I'm sorry, this is going to sound a little weird. It's his bedroom. He's saying, I really want to be intimate with you. Song of Solomon's, I'm going to read here in a little while after we're going to give you just a, a break here, encourage you to support not only what we're trying to do, there's so much more I'd like to say to you concerning that we're not even going to get into the holy of holy places. I'm looking for some support. Please feel free. There's a cash app that's going to come up. And, and if you are inspired to hear more or to help out, we'd sure appreciate that. But we want to tell you that uh, this high priest, the idea of coming into the secret place of God, God wants to be intimate with you in a way that a husband and a wife are. God wants to be so, to know you better than anyone on the planet. That's why I say it's more than prayer. How do we get to know God that way? Well, all of these things. We have to understand the blood atonement. The best way to know God is in the word. Washing I've gotten to know him so well by reading the word. Not only reading it, washing means replacing the way I think with the way he thinks. I need the word of God as the agent to clean. And it's the word that shows me where I keep missing it. I need that Holy Spirit, the anointing, the unction of the Holy One. You, know, you need not little children, a teacher. You have an unction from the Holy Ghost and you know all things. That does not come specifically from the word, but from the unction of the Holy Spirit. The blending together of word and spirit in us opens us up to the truth of God in every aspect of our life. We're going to show you how 
um, God really desires this intimacy, that there's going to be many that he's going to say, no, we didn't really, we weren't intimate. How do you get intimate with God? This is a sign of being covered in that perfume. It's all of it. So I'm washing myself in the word. I'm filling myself with the spirit. As I've done to the least of these, I've done to him. If there's a person in your life that, that you don't like to be around, there's unforgiveness or there's anger, that feeling, that's how much you love Christ. As you've done to the least of these. As we get our relationships right and we offer them as a sacrifice to God, I'm getting all these things together. Now I'm coming into the secret place. Remember he said, don't even come to the communion table if you have ought against others. For this reason, there's many sick and dying because they don't rightly discern the body of Christ. Once we discern the body of Christ, we're now able to come to the altar of incense in our lifestyle, in our words, in our deeds. And we cover ourselves because now only once a year the high priest was able to go in but we're able to go in continually. So if you'll stay with me here, we're going to take a, a moment's break and we're going to come back and look, kind of take a glimpse into the Holy of Holies, but we're also going to show you the intimacy I'm talking about of God. Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Pavlaka. I hope you've been blessed or have enjoyed this program, Food for the Soul. We'd like to do this on a regular basis. There's many messages on my heart that I would love to, to bring forth. Uh, we're kind of just getting started at this and the production costs are uh, causing us to stretch our faith. I'm hoping that maybe you'd consider or prayerfully consider supporting the show, certainly with your prayers, but if you could send a financial gift or seed to us to get us started, I would really appreciate that. We're at New Life Family Church in North Carolina. That's where I pastor. Also, if the show has blessed you, I'm hoping that you'll watch us on www.globaltvnetwork.us. We're also available on the Facebook at uh, New Life Family NC. And of course, you can find us on YouTube at Food for the Soul. I hope you've been blessed and I hope to hear from you. God bless you. Welcome back. Thanks for considering and prayerfully considering to support us. Um, we'd like to, uh, you know, just encourage you for the coming shows. Like I said, this is the end of a six-part series. If you've been with us, we're going to finish up here in the last couple minutes. But um, I hope you will support Global Television Network that we need here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and also the teachings that you see here and other shows on the program. If you've uh, just joining in, we have, this is the end of a six-part series. We're talking about how we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You and I are the temple. We are the high priest, and we've showed how the high priest walks through the furniture. We've looked at all of them, how you have to come through the door of Jesus. You have to bring an altar. Something in you is corrupt. He, his death took your place. To understand that is important in getting born again. The next step is the washing of water by the word. How many Christians? It's being preached for the last generation. We're getting into the word and renewing our mind. We're learning about following the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our life. As many as are led by the Spirit, we're the sons of God. We've talked about the, um, the body of Christ, how explicit the word is that we work corporately, not singularly, that I am incomplete without you, just as a husband is incomplete without the, a man incomplete without the woman. The body of Christ all has anointings that fitly join together to make the body work. We've now put all those things together and we're talking about the last piece of furniture before we go behind the curtains. You can see a, a, a picture on your screen where the curtains opened. That curtain was never opened until Jesus died and that curtain was rent. The high priest just saw all these other pieces of furniture but you can see now behind the curtain so the last thing he'd come to is the altar of incense and we talked about covering ourselves in a prayer life but not just prayer this is that special place the secret place of the most high god psalms 91 that says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty what is the secret place well you know the bible teaches that we he is the bridegroom that we are engaged to be married or have been married, that there'll be an actual wedding feast? What is the secret place in the marriage? Folks, it's the, cham the, cheap the chambers. It's where the two become one. Don't get freaky on me. Everything here is types and shadows. I'm not talking about having sex. That's in the natural realm. 
These are types and shadows. That which is born of spirit is spirit. I'm talking about the intimacy that takes place when two spirits blend together. It happens in, if you're married, it happens in your chambers with your wife, but there's not, that's just not a physical union. It says you two become one. That's why the Bible says don't sleep around. You take one woman and one man, you enter covenant because you're sharing of your very self. The two are becoming one. It's not supposed to be broken apart multiple times. With Christ, we enter that secret place. Let me read this. It's going to sound a little weird probably. This is Song of Solomon, verse 1 and verse 4. And now this book is very erotic, but I assure you, everybody I, I've read after agrees, this is a type and shadow. This is the church and Jesus. This is the bride and the bridegroom. The fragrance of your perfume is pleasing. Your name is like perfume pured, poured out. No wonder the maidens adore you. Take me away with you. Let us hurry. May the king bring me into his chambers. We will rejoice and delight in you. We will praise your love above wine. It is only right that they adore you. How beautiful is this? We're talking about the intimacy of God. You know you get born again, and I think you're going to heaven. If you don't even get to the labor, I think you're going to heaven. But you're going to live outside in that carnal place. You don't even get to the holy place without going and washing, renewing your mind in the word of God. And you get into the holy place and you have these being led by the spirit and checking your relationships. That's with your wife, with your enemies, with your friends, and with the church. Getting that in order and in check, you now present your whole body a living sacrifice unto God. That's not the burnt altar, that's the altar of incense. Our lifestyle, your giving is an uh, altar. You, when you love your enemies, when you give a glass of water to someone in need, this is the incense, the lifestyle that we cover ourselves with as we enter into the Holy of Holies. Don't you want to go into the Holy of Holies? Don't you want to dwell there one day with the Lord as there's a thousand days elsewhere? I trust you've been there and you know what I'm talking about. When the presence of God so fills your spirit, man, that Paul said, I don't know whether I'm in the body or in the spirit. When God touches you in that place, you're in the secret place. And we can abide there. I'd love to do a lesson on it. But for just a moment, let's look at the picture that shows us, you know, the main piece of furniture in there. What you're going to see is the, the Ark of the Covenant. I can't teach on it today. There's three things. There's two angels. It's the mercy seat. They cover their wings over the mercy seat. But there's the manna's in there. The table of stone is in there. And Aaron's rod that came alive are in there. And the fire dwells above there. That is us as well. It's a whole new teaching. I'd love to bring it to you. If you might stop and consider supporting Global Television Network, supporting Food for the Soul, you can give, there's a cash app. There's also, um, you'll see on the screen, you can join us on Facebook. You can join us through the web. You can join us through the church for more teachings. But prayerfully consider supporting us. We're at that place. We're just getting started and the production costs are um, a challenge for us. Anything you can help, we'd sure appreciate both the station and the show. I hope you've enjoyed this teaching on being the temple of the Holy Ghost. More importantly, I hope you've learned something that you can apply or that it increases your desire to come closer. Draw me close unto you, O Lord. Don't you want to be closer to the Lord? God bless you.